First Samuel chapter four, verse one. Let's go ahead and start there. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines and encamped beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines encamped in Aphek. Then the Philistines put themselves in battle array against Israel. And when they had joined battle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. And when the people had come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Shiloh to us, that when it comes among us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies. So the people said to Shiloh that they might bring from the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who dwelled between the cherubim and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth shook. Now when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, what does the sound of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews mean? Then they understood that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. So the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into the camp. And they said, Woe to us, for such a thing has never happened before. Woe to us, who will deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and conduct yourselves like men, you Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews. As they have been to you, conduct yourselves like men and fight. So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated. And every man fled his tent, that there was a very great slaughter. And there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. Also the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli... Hophni and Phineas died. Go to verse 18. Then it happened when he made mention of the ark of God that Eli fell off the seat backward by the side of his gate and his neck was broken and he died. For the man was old and heavy and he had judged Israel 40 years. Let us stop there. You know, for the past two months, uh, since the presidential election back in November, almost 80 million people who voted for Trump uh, have been expecting vindication for the obvious voter fraud in our elections. Amen. But to no avail. In fact, things got worse. So if you remember last week, what happened at the Capitol? Come on. Um, and all the chaos that ensued after that. And I started thinking about something and a thought came to me and it might have came upon you as you uh, seen all this chaos and our election and how just the fraud and the division and the wickedness and evil of leftists is where is God? Where is the favor of God? So many had counted on God giving us favor with the election, right? So many had counted on God and given us favor with uh, just these congressional seats that were lost uh, to Democrats and which would favor, you know, the Senate. And I'm not trying to get political here, but I'm just, just follow along here. Uh, it seems like there's been a lot of bad news for God's people lately. I've heard many people say, what is God doing? I don't get it. So much is going on. As for myself, I'm not so much concerned about what he is doing. But I'm more concerned about God not leaving me or forsaking me Amen. during this. I want God to remain in my camp. Amen. Come on. For when God is in our camp, we are truly blessed. Victory is assured. And we are recipients of his great and wonderful promises. Come on. Amen. All right. I've entitled my message this morning, God has come into the camp. And what's going on here in our text, Israel has become disconnected from God. 
the nation of Israel. God's chosen people. Because of sin, disobedience, they have become disconnected. And how many know, amen, of all things that we can experience in our lives, one of the most dangerous and most troublesome experience would be a disconnection from God Almighty. For we have experienced that prior to Jesus. Before we gave our life to Christ, we were disconnected from God, weren't we? And look at all the chaos that came upon us because of our sin. Like I often say, we are very fortunate that we're even alive here, sitting in this nice warm church, listening to the Word of God. The fact that we have homes and families, we should, for the most part, not even be here. Right. We have escaped death more than once, twice, ten times. Hello? Well, most of us should not even be married here. She should have dumped you a long time ago. Hello? He should have dumped you a long time ago. Come on. But God has been in our camp. But when we come dis to become disconnected from God, Oh, the enemy begins to have a heyday. Yeah. So Israel had become disconnected from God. They had forgotten God and they began to worship Baal instead. They abandoned the things of God and consequently they were given up to their enemies. For when we get disconnected from God, by simple default, we are given to the enemy. Come on. And the last thing I need is to be given to the enemy of drug addiction, which I was delivered victoriously back in 1993. Huh? Oh, I worry, not worry, but I, let me use a better word, I'm very concerned and cautious about my salvation. I truly understand the scriptures when it says uh, to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Come on. I think sometimes we're even more worried about other salvation than our own at times. Right. If you're a parent, you'll understand that one. Amen. Mm -hmm. So here, Israel had became disconnected from God. They began to worship the idol Baal. And God had told them from the gate when they were delivered from Egypt, when he brought them out, he had instructed them on how they were to live in the land. He warned them. That if you ignore me, and in fact, you can read the scriptures in Leviticus, it says, all right, if you will not listen to me, and if you walk contrary unto me, then I'm going to walk contrary unto you, and also with fury. And I will chastise you seven times for your sins. He says that in Leviticus. So God had simply laid out his plan, his consequences, also the blessings of following him and being obedient. He said, look here, all right, I'm going to give you simple instruction of delivery from Egyptian bondage. You have been crying to me for almost 500 years to be delivered. I sent you Moses. He delivered you in a miraculous way. You've seen the plagues. You, you, you experienced, uh, you know, the, the, the ocean parting, the Red Sea. I mean, the sea parting, not the ocean. You experienced me coming against the soldiers after you. And, and wiping them out. You see many things in the wilderness. And I ask you when you come into your land. When you come into your promises. Simply walk according to my statutes. My word. If you go against me. I'm going to go against you. But with fury. Oh, no. Aren't you glad you came to church this morning? Mm -hmm. Trust me it gets better. <laughs> so at this point in our text. Israel was disconnected because of disobedience and God gave them over to the Philistines. And the only way they can get out of this trouble was simply return to God. To repent and renew their faith and covenant with God. This sounds simple. Huh? Doesn't it sound simple? Just return to God. Oh, but that's a lot easier to say than to do for those that have tried to return back to God. Come on. Yeah. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. 
Some people take years and years to get back to God, don't they? Yes. I've seen this in, in all my years of serving him. And if they would have done that prior this Philistine attack, they wouldn't have lost thousands of people. All they had to do was return to God. But how many know, amen, that for the most part, uh, this is one of the most hardest things for man to do. Because man and our flesh do not like or love the spiritual things. Let's be honest. Right? Oh, man and people will perform rituals and acts and uh, routine just to, uh, to, to appease their own uh, selfish, righteous, thing that, you know, uh, desires in their heart. And, you know, we'll do little routines. And if I do this, if I pray this, if I give that much, and you know what, if I say amen three times, and, you know, it becomes ritual. We, we, we're good at those things. Come on. We're good at playing the part, as we say, or faking the funk at times. Come on. And I'm not trying to stand up here and call you a bunch of hypocrites, amen, because uh, uh, I'm preaching from this way, that way. But we've all acted hypocritical in our walk with Christ one time or another. We act all holy at times when we're really, we're unholy. We're full of holes. Come on. And that happens, all right, because of discouragement, because of the flesh, because of getting into temptation. So I get all that, right? But how many know, amen, that you know, besides that, we should continue to walk holy unto God and maintain a relationship with Him and do all we can not to become disconnected with our God. Because we need God in our camp. Huh? Our churches in general, and I'm talking about all churches in general, they should be packed every day they are open because of what everything is going on in our society. Come on. Every church in this city should be packed. Well, you know, it's COVID. No, come. All right. It ain't stopping nobody from going to Costco with 3 million people there. Come on. Come on. And Walmart. I mean, for those that can go to Walmart. You know, I mean, some of you have been bad. And you know who you are. <laughs> oh, Lord. But how many know this, churches in general should be packed? Huh? Because of what's going on in our nation, in our families, in our homes, in our marriages, in our kids. Amen. Yeah. But there's a disconnect. People have allowed themselves to set patterns in their lives and precedents that, well, you know what? Because of COVID, you know, I choose to do something else on Sunday now. And it sets a pattern. And how many know it's hard to break patterns and mindsets? Come on. Think about it. Think about what God did when he delivered us from our sin. He broke some stuff. Like Julie said, we've got a lot of junk. We, got a lot of, we had a lot of junk in our trunks. <laughs> I'm talking about even had to hire and rent a trailer. Hold on. Come on. Hmm? <laughs> but how many know, instead of attempting to get right with God... Right. We come up with these plans and formulas to get right. Yeah. And the nation of Israel, their answer was, okay, we need God. Okay, they, they, they acknowledged they needed God, but they said they they, they they went to the Ark of God, right? The Ark of the Covenant, right? They say, why don't we go get the Ark of the Covenant? Let's go bring it into the camp. And this will assure us victory. All we need to do is call Pastor Eddie and it'll be cool. Huh? Come on, I've been there. Hey, I get called, hey, Pastor, fix this. Talk to my wife. <laughs> Tell her to give me one more chance. Tell her to bail me out. Tell him I'm sorry. Come on. No, that's not going to work. You need to repent. You need to get back with God. Hello? You, you know what? And, uh, and the nation of Israel, they fear, well, you know, if we bring the Ark of the Covenant, then we will truly have favor. Come on. Huh? There, there's no way that we cannot have victory. We've got to bring the Ark in. Huh? And that is the way people are. We invent thousands of ways, come on, to escape our problems. Don't we? We will think of 101 ways to fix that, to fix this. But we neglect the thing we need the most. 
return to God. Repent and return to God, to come to God in faith. For the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Right? right. Rituals and all these routines will not bust a grape. It'll maybe make you feel better. All right. But in the day, amen, we need God in our presence. We need God in our camp. Come on. And the whole time, Jesus has always been the answer. Right? How many know? We know that, don't we? In fact, you're reminded every time you watch Monday Night Prayer on YouTube. Don't I? This is my closing phrase. Remember, God loves you and Jesus is what? Yes. Now, it's not just a phrase that sounds good. And my closing. Da -da -da. <laughs> it's not. It's that Jesus is the answer. Right. But we must come to him. Come to him. Jesus even says, I'm the answer. Come to me, all of you who are burning. You're heavy laden. I will give you rest. Just come, learn of me. My yoke is easy. Put it on. Check it out. My commandments are not burdensome. We make them hard. We make them tough. I have no way. Let me tell you something. Loving Christ is one of the most easiest things I do. It's so easy to love a God that loves us the way he loves us. Right? His commandments, though, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Turn the other cheek. All right? They slap you around. Turn and give them the other one, too. Come on. Bless your neighbor above yourself. God's commandments at times can be a little burdensome, even though the Bible says they're not. But for a lot, they are. But loving Christ and coming to Him, our, our Heavenly Father, it, it, it should not take no effort. That song that they sang, which is, I think, go, uh, so befitting to what I'm preaching on, uh, Clean Me a Clean Heart, Psalm 51. I, I wrote that down. No, not right now. I already prior. And think about that. That is one of the most scariest scriptures where he says, Lord, you know, don't cast me away from your presence. Right? You know that? I mean, you guys just sang that song, Clean Me a Clean Heart. Don't cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. David in that Psalm 51 will say, Lord, do not disconnect yourself from me because when I am left alone, I will head for a wreck. Come on. I will mess up everything. I will hinder my marriage. I will leave my family wrong. I'll get caught up. I'll do more damage than good. David says, oh, do not take your presence from me, God. And please do not take your Holy Spirit from me because I need his conviction. I need him to lead me into all truth. I need to, him to comfort me when I am feeling sorrowful and hurt. I need all of you. Come on. I need God the Father for authority. All right. And headship. I need the love of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. And I need the work of the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me on this earth that at times can be very horrible and sinful. We need the Trinity in our lives. Amen. We cannot get disconnected from them. And we need camp. I mean, we need God to come into our camp. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Israelites thought, well, we, we can bring God into our camp if we bring the ark. Nope, they weren't. In fact, the God went into the enemy's camp. Come on. Think about this. If you're following along and listening, all right, they brought the ark into the, uh, into the camp, Israel. They shouted, okay? We got the ark. And in fact, the Bible says that we read that the earth even shook. Hello? Like when mama's mad and she yells at her kids, the, the earth shakes. Well, at least in my house. Mine too. Huh? Sister, hey, when Sister Dal yells, oh Lord, everything shakes in my house. A desert. <laughs> Hello? Huh? 
Israel, amen, they were in a horrible condition. They went out to fight against the Philistines and they were defeated. And the elders in our text says, the Lord has defeated. Why has the Lord defeated us against and uh, before the Philistines? And someone had the bright idea. Well, all we need to do is bring the Ark of the Covenant. All we have to do, amen, is go bring, let's have Sister So-and-so pray for us. All we need is to call Pastor Dave. All we need, that's fine, amen, we're here for one another. But at the end of the day, primarily, we need Jesus first. <laughs> hmm? Yep. And the Bible says, amen, that God gave the Philistines favor instead of his own people. That's not pretty, that's not too good. Come on. Uh, no, wait, we're, we're, we're God's chosen people. We're, well, was, yeah, primarily in the beginning, the Is Israel was God's chosen people. But, you know, we were, and since their rejection of God, the Bible says we were grafted into the mind. All right, we were orphans, but now because of Christ, we're sons and daughters. Before it was just the Israelites, the, the Jews, right? Now, I mean, we're sons and daughters of God. Hey, this should be happening to me. Yeah. So, Israel had been defeated because of their sin. There was sin in their camp. Hello? And God says, I'm not going to dwell in that camp. Now you might say, well, why did he, well, you know, why did he give favor to the Philistines, which were heathen nation? Well, he wasn't dwelling with them. He just simply took his hand in favor off of Israel, which, like I said before, by default, the enemy usually wins. Come on. Israel had been defeated because of their sin. God removed his presence from them. Come on. You know, the prophet Isaiah said this in that book. God's hand is not short that he cannot save. Come on. Neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your sins have separated you from your God. Come on. The prophet Isaiah said, look it. God hears you. It's not like he can't hear you. Come on. It's not like he can't reach you. But your sins have separated you from God. Come on. The nation of Israel did not need the Ark of the Covenant. Come on. They didn't need to bring it to battle. They simply needed to repent. Come on. And seek God. That's the answer. Should have said amen there. The Ark of the Covenant is some... Good luck charm. They, 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 that's what they kind of brought in. Uh, this is our good luck charm. Remember back in the days, anybody used to carry a rabbit's foot? <laughs> now that's back, in the, that's, that's back in the, I think back in the 70s or 80s. Come on, where did old school at? Oh my God. He's having a keychain, remember the, the, the rabbit's foot? Go, so you remember. You remember, huh? That's going to bring you luck. Right? Huh? Oh, let me get real religious here. Uh, we, or we would have St. Christopher on our little dashboard. Remember St. Christopher? He's the one that would protect you as you travel. Where are all my ex-Catholics at? St. <laughs> Christopher is a protector, right? He's a saint. Did you know that St. Christopher was demoted by the Pope and now he's not even acknowledged as a saint anymore? Wow. So, so he might as well throw away that St. Christopher. <laughs> If it's gold, throw it in the basket. We'll figure out what to do with it. <laughs> huh? So we think all these relics and little idols you know, you can give us fortune. No. Inanimate objects can do nothing. Right. At all. What we need is the living God. We need to reestablish okay, our covenant with Him. We need to come back to God. Now, I'm not saying that we're all backslidden here. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm talking in general terms. But when you find your life in a way that is unfavorable to you, I always question myself and search my heart out when things are falling apart around me. I say, Lord, first and foremost, have I sinned against you that I'm not aware of? For the most part, I'm pretty, I pretty, I know when I sin. Don't get me wrong. There are times, amen, when you can even, the Bible says that we can even deceive ourselves. I mean, you're pretty good when you can deceive yourself. And I examine my heart, Lord, when things are not, all right, 
you know, happening around me and your favor scene has departed when the church, amen, is not, all right, going forward like it should when the presence is not felt and when, you know, the giving is short. I go, Lord, is there, is there, are you in this camp or is there sin in the camp? Come on. No inanimate, an inanimate idol or relic can do anything for you. Come on. So here in our, in our text, the nation of Israel, they brought, they brought the ark in. They assumed they would have great victory. They even shouted that the earth shook, like I mentioned earlier. But all they were doing was selling wolf tickets. Because God was not with them. They were loud. And, this is, and look at what happened. So the Philistine army... They heard the shout. They said, oh, Lord Jesus, God is in the building. We've heard about their God. We've heard about what he did back in Egypt. We've heard about how he, oh, boy, he, he every nation that came against his people, he wiped them out. So the Philistines were actually fearing for their lives. And the Philistine leaders said, you know what? You need to act like men and you need to fight, you know, tooth and nail. Because their God is in their camp. Come on. And what it did, it actually motivated them, the Philistines. It actually got their drilling pumping. All right, they say, man, you know what? We're going to have to fight like dogs. And they fought hard. They fought relentless. And they defeated the God's people. Hmm? Why? Because God was... Not in the camp of Israel. Come on. Yeah. And they defeated them horribly. Come on. Not only that. They spanked them. <laughs> they, they spanked them like a red-headed stepchild. Not only that. They took the Ark of the Covenant with them. Said, Give us a pass up. <laughs> they took the Ark of the Covenant with them. And they left Israel perplexed and wondering, ¿Qué pasó? Baby, ¿Qué pasó? I thought I was your only vato. Oh, no. Where did that song come from? I don't even know where it came from right now. Oh, yeah. You thought, cuz. Oh, it was a very dark day for the nation of Israel. The army had defeated them and taken them enemies. Come on. Why? Because God was not in their camp. Why was it in their camp? Well, the nation of, of the Israel as a whole had been sinning against God and worshiping Baal. And not only that, the ones that were supposed to be leading God's people spiritually, Eli, the priest, and his two sons, Hophni and Phineas, amen. They should have been, amen, the ones leading them spiritually and right. But if you read in the prior chapters of 1 Samuel, all right, God was angry at Eli and his son because what they were doing when, in those days, amen, when the people would bring their sacrifices and offerings, it was usually in, in the form of animals and meat, right? And what they were doing, they would boil, you know, they would have this, like, big old, you know, pot boiling, and they would throw the sacrifices in there. It was boiling, it was cooking, like carne asada, okay? <laughs> and the priest, you get like a three-pointed uh, object, amen, like a, uh, like a pit kind of thing, and he would stab it in the, in the meat while it's boiling. And whatever they brought up, that was for the priest to live on, like a tithe kind of, support the work of God, right? So they, whatever he brought up, that's what God allowed them to have and to, to eat and that'd be for them, for their, you know, because of their priestly duties. Well, Phineas and Hopney, the so-called assistant priests, well, they were kind of pinching a little bit more off the bag. Hello? <laughs> they were breaking off more than they should have. They were like, get it? <laughs> and God said, what you doing? You're, you're defiling my sacrifice. You're withholding my tithe. Uh-oh, I don't want to go there. Let's, let's get away from that subject. <laughs> Huh? And God was angry at them. And God was angry at their father, the head priest, because he did not do nothing about it. He allowed his sons to just roam rapid, do whatever they want. Okay? So, you have the nation of Israel. They're worshiping Baal. 
the spiritual the spiritual leaders, amen, were sinful themselves. And what, what does that equal? It equals not having the favor of God. Come on. So they went to the battle. They brought, I mean, they went to the Ark of, they brought the Ark of the Covenant. There they are, they're coming in, bring the Ark of the Covenant. They're all got their priestly garments on. They're all holy and they're coming in. And what happened to them? They were killed. The two sons were killed. And then what happened after that? A messenger came and told Eli, the father, your sons were killed. We lost all right, great soldiers. Thousands died. Your sons died. And Eli, he's sitting there on some kind of rocking chair or something. And he went back. And the Bible said, because he was big and heavy, kind of, that he went back and broke his neck and he died too. Come on. Yep. Broke his neck and he died. And to make matters worse, one of the son's wife, she was in labor at that time. And when she heard that the Ark of the Covenant had been taken by the Philistine people, and when she heard that her husband had died, and also the father-in-law had died, and she's she's having a son, she said she said, well, she's having labor, and one of the maidservants or midwives says, Hey, do not fret, you you, you're, you you have a son, you're about to have a boy. And she did not even regard it, she didn't she just kept quiet, she didn't say nothing. Okay, and all she said was, you know what? I'm gonna name him Ichabod. For that word Ichabod means the glory has departed. And she died. Wow. There's nothing but bad news after bad news after bad news. You ever had one of those weeks? Yes. That nothing seems to go right? Huh? Like the favor of God is not upon you? <laughs> it seems like everything you touch used to turn to gold. Now it's turning to plastic, falling apart. Come on. Could it be that God is not in your camp? Could it be that the glory had departed from your home? From you personally? Come on. Because it is a sad and tragic day when the glory of God departs from a nation. Come on. From a church or from a person. Come on. Oh, I often see it, unfortunately, in all my years of pastoring and ministering in the church. You can see, amen, when the glory of God has departed from an individual. It's so noticeable. Come on. It's like I was telling uh, Brother Leo earlier, he was asking me, he goes, did you guys get any plant in here? I go, no, which one? He goes, that one right there. I go, get there about 10 years, Leo. <laughs> it had lights on, too? I go, yeah, it had lights, too. I go, probably what it was, Leo, is that when I pray over there, that my light is so illuminating that you can't even notice that truth. <laughs> I, I overtake it. Yeah, come on. It's the same thing that happens when people walk in. You see the glory of God departed from their lives. It's just dark, sad. They're irritable. They complain. They're just looking for a reason. Come on. Huh? They're just mad. They have grudges. They hold grudges. They take the word personal. Why are you talking about me, Pastor? <laughs> because you need help. You need rebuke. You need instruction. You need correction. Encouragement. Huh? Like my wife says, a shoe fits. Put it on, partner. I put it on. Don't like it at times. Mm-hmm. You see it. And you know, amen, when you get to the New Testament, as I bring it to my last point here, Jesus, amen, if you remember in the book of Revelation, he begins to name all these churches, right? And you remember the church of Ephesus. He said, you know what? I'm about to remove your candlestick from you. Okay. And why? Because you have left your first love. Remember that? And Revelation. He, he, you know, I want to commune. I want to commune with you. I, I want to build a relationship with you. But you know what? You don't take me no more. You don't invite me in no more. I'm not going to your door. Hey, let me come in. This, 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 you know, fellowship. Come on. 
But you're on the end of left field doing God knows why. You're consumed with this, consumed with that. Huh? Yeah, you might go to church here and there. And if you do go to church, it's all ritualistic. It's all just, you know, routine. Uh, you know, you're, yeah, you're singing the songs, all right? But, you know, you're offering up these sacrifices with your lips. But your heart is so far from me. Hello. Come on, you just, come on. I know your heart. You know what? You have left your first love. Remember that? Huh? Yeah, Ichabod is written all over your face. The glory has departed. The glow is gone. Isn't that amazing when someone gets saved? There is actual glow upon their face. Come on, really. It's just shine. It's just, man, that person is. But when they're not, their eyes are dark. They seem, you know, darker than usual. <laughs> their wrinkles are more noticeable. Something just... You can put all the foundation you, you want, girls. And you just, come on. Come on. You know what I'm talking about? You can get the latest creams. Come on. Huh? You can get the latest things on in Home Shopping Network. You know? Well, you know, you, you know and it's just, and just, the glow is not there. The glory has departed. Hmm? Your countenance has fallen. There's no joy. The glory has departed from their lives. So what do you do? Jesus says, what? You know, oh, what, what must you do? He says, remember where you have fallen. Don't neglect it. Don't push it under the carpet. Remember where you fell. In other words, what he's saying, don't deny it. Don't excuse it. He's not saying, oh, remember the past. He said, you know what? Do not be in denial about it. Remember where you fell. He says, and repent. Right. And he says, repeat your first works. Remember those three things he told the church of Ephesus? Okay. okay. Remember where you've fallen. Repent. And remember how this all started. Your works. The things you used to do with me and for me. Not that we work our salvation. That, you know. No, it's by grace that we are fortunate enough to have the love of Christ and His eternal love, amen, when we give our lives to Him. But He said, remember your first works? The moment that you came in communion with me and we established a relationship, immediately you could not stop talking with me. Come on, remember when you first met your first love or one of them? <laughs> the, the one that really counted? <laughs> you could not talk to them enough. Right? He was always on the phone. Oh, I would spend, I mean, you know the story, I would spend hours upon hours, all right, in my teeny ta track, you know, pay phone, see me market. <laughs> hours, be foggy, it'd be cold, but there I am just, oh, I love you, man. I mean, oh, I want to see you talking about kinds of smack and life. <laughs> you know, kinds of game, amen, for hours. I wouldn't even fall asleep. <laughs> my first love, real love, come on. Huh? Yeah. What happened? No, <laughs> I feel like get, I feel like get a payphone and put it in my house. <laughs> Good old days. Come on. Yeah. Remember the and then and then when you, you, you talk with her or him and then and then you were doing good things. Come on. Buying stuff and you know, well, I had a hustle. I didn't have a job. I, was, uh, I stole this, stole that, and just to come up to give her this, give her that. Come on. Huh? You know, actually paid for McDonald's for the first time, you know what I mean? <laughs> Instead of her, holy mine. We did all these words because why? We were in love. Just like when we were in love with Christ, we did all these words. We were praying, we were giving. Come on. We were involved. We could not have enough of Christ in our life. We could not have enough of the house of God. Come on. Whatever, whatever the church was doing, we, want, we love God so much, we just want to be part of what the church was doing as it was involved in ministry, streams, teaching, outreaching, whatever we were Oh, I just could not get enough. We were in love. Yeah. Think about it. The glory has departed. Now it is hard to get people to the church. Huh? What has happened? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm thankful for you that have supported, and for you that are constantly, continuously here. But it's more about it's, not, it's more than just being here. It's what's in here. 
And like I say, and that brings out to a close, oh, it is a long week from Sunday to Sunday. It seems like a month. Huh? Oh, I don't know how people can neglect God and the house of God and not having effects that's going to bring heartache to their lives. God has come into the camp. Now, unfortunately for the nation of Israel, it wasn't their camp. God has been with us, and that brings us to a close all these years, almost 20 years, no, 20 years. He has, his presence has blessed our church all those years. Uh, and by the grace of God, we've been able to reach people, lost souls, been able to do works, beyond and it's simply because the glory of God is here but God forbid if the glory departs come on I don't want if, the, if God ain't here I don't want to be here I love you guys but it got to be God here first because he's the one that helps you to love you guys you that? <laughs> nah hey you guys are easy to love most of the time uh, God has come into the camp let us bow our heads this up.